So the Annenberg Center is changing its brand identity to Penn Live Arts. And the reason we're doing that is we wanted a brand that really reflected how our programs are really reaching beyond the four walls of the Annenberg Center. Well, the Annenberg Center, as you know, many people may not know, was the first performing arts center in the Philly metro area. It was the first theater that was built with a multidisciplinary program in mind. And when you look back at the history of Philadelphia's arts and culture scene, the Annenberg Center was really at the forefront of introducing a lot of really pivotal artists to the Philadelphia area. So in many ways, the Annenberg Center started as a home for theater, for new work, for contemporary theater. But as it evolved over the years, it started to integrate um, new programming streams like dance. The Annenberg Center has always invested in jazz music, in world music, sounds from across the globe, as well as contemporary music. The center was really always focused on presenting a diverse range of artists with a particular commitment to artists of color. And that really started 50 years ago in its initial programs. So over the last few years, the programming has really gone beyond the walls of the Annenberg Center. We use the campus as our canvas when we program, but we also program around Philadelphia, including West Philadelphia and Center City. A 50th anniversary is a great time to think about your name, to think about really the next chapter in an institution's history. We think it's a great opportunity to really reimagine uh, our institution's name and our programming name. Well, I'm really excited to think about the next 50 years for Penn Live Arts and for the performing arts, you know, on campus at the Annenberg Center around Philadelphia. I think what you're going to see is a greater uh, range of innovative and flexible programs that when we think about the traditional proscenium theater, that's not going anywhere. People always want to come to a traditional theater. But increasingly, artists are using different spaces, outdoor spaces, digital spaces, black box spaces, spaces that are very flexible, where the audience is not necessarily seated in a passive way, but they're participating in a production. We've been fortunate enough to be presenting uh, artists throughout the pandemic in real time from our stage as a live stream, but we haven't had the, the luxury of having the audience here in the theater. So I think the first thing for me is seeing that audience back, our community back in our theaters, um, saying hi to them in the lobby, talking to them, and welcoming them back for live performance. And of course, we're approaching that in a really serious way, considering all kinds of health and safety regulations. So we're very excited to come back in the fall. We're bringing a really innovative piece in music, uh, a piece by John Luther Adams, the American composer, entitled 10,000 Birds. And that will be done outside at the Morris Arboretum in Chestnut Hill. It'll be the Philadelphia premiere of that piece. But we're thrilled to welcome uh, Michelle Dorrance for her Penn Live Arts debut. She's a fantastic tap artist, a MacArthur Genius Award winner, and somebody who's really innovating in the field of choreography. She'll be presenting her version of the Nutcracker, which is a tap-based Nutcracker that'll be in December. We're welcoming back Mark Morris, a longtime favorite of Philadelphia. And, uh, he's coming back next spring uh, with his uh, Philadelphia debut of his piece Pepperland, which is based all around the Beatles music. It's irreverent, it's joyful, it's a very fun program. A new series that we're really thrilled about is a Cirque series. So we've seen tremendous response to a lot of the programming that we've done around circus arts. And we're welcoming back a company, Cirque Mechanics, based out of Las Vegas. Longtime partners of Penn Live Arts have been The Crossing, Donald Nally's contemporary choir based here in Philadelphia. Their Crossing at Christmas program that we present at Trinity Rittenhouse in downtown Philadelphia. A really important jazz artist that we're thrilled to welcome is Cecile McLaurin Salvant. She's an incredible vocalist, somebody who really represents the next generation of jazz vocalists. When people think about the performing arts at Penn, it's a really rich community across student programs, professional programs, academic programs. So it makes it a little bit more um, understandable, if you will, to, to see a program that's maybe somewhere in Center City or somewhere in West Philadelphia and know that it's coming from Penn, but it's coming from this tradition of 50 years of exceptional performing arts programs. We hear so often from audience that they love coming to our programs because they know they can trust us. They know that they're going to see the best in dance, music, theater, and film. And so I think Penn Live Arts helps us organize that in a really coherent way on and off campus.